Welcome to the Zapco Studio X 6 channel amplifier with 8 channel DSP. This is Clifton of Origin Incorporated, the master distributor of Zapco in the United States. Included with the amplifier in the box is a USB cable for connecting to a Windows PC, a high level input adapter, Allen wrenches, four spare fuses, and mounting hardware. This Class AB amplifier features an extruded black aluminum chassis with 3D logo and a clean finish that makes a statement of quality. The SD6X DSP features six channels of amplification at 100 watts per channel and 300 watts per bridge pair of channels at 4 ohms. The input stage offers low-level RCAs with Tiffany-style connectors, a speaker-level connection, and an optical digital input in addition to an optional APTX-enabled Bluetooth module. At the heart of this amplifier is the onboard digital signal processor, offering eight channels of total processing to allow for six amplified output channels and two channels of auxiliary output. Each channel includes high and low pass filters, polarity control, signal delay, and 15 bands of parametric equalization per channel. To provide tuning functionality, Zapco developed an easy-to-use program for Windows PC, and we'll step through the setup now. You'll notice in the top left-hand corner, it shows Not Link. We're going to plug the USB in now, and you'll see it change to Link and open the previous setup. First, we need to configure the channel setup. You'll see it currently set up for a standard two-channel input analog scenario. We're going to reset that and input a custom channel setup using two channels of input. Channel 1 input is left and channel 2 input is right. Channel 1 output is going to be a small bookshelf speaker on the left. Channel 2 will be a bookshelf speaker on the right. Channels 3 and 4 are going to be bridged for a mid bass speaker on the left, so we'll use input channel 1 on both, and channels 5 and 6 for the right with channel 2 on both. Channels 7 and 8 of the DSP will be summed by using input channels 1 and 2 on each output channel to control a powered 15-inch subwoofer. This is my standard test setup that the ST6X DSP is currently powering. Back to the main screen, you'll see that all the necessities are on one page, with the output signal delay in the upper left-hand corner, the output channels to the right of that, high-pass and low-pass filters to the right of that, polarity and level control for each channel to the right of that, and the master level control on the far right. At the bottom, you have 15 bands of parametric equalization. Starting in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see that the output signal delay is set up graphically by speaker type and location, and you have the options of delaying by milliseconds or distance by centimeters or inches. If you, for example, enter the distance in inches, it will automatically convert to delay by milliseconds when you toggle the switches or back to distance in inches or centimeters. The DSP channel descriptions are fixed, but you can go by the output channel numbers. When you link a pair of channels, it only links that set. If you go to a different pair of channels, it will switch to those. First, we're going to set up the crossovers for the bookshelf speakers on channels 1 and 2. We're going to high pass these at 300 Hz. And with it linked, when we input in the first channel, you'll notice it automatically copies the channel's pair. Next, we're going to set up channels 3 and 4 for the left mid bass driver, leaving the high pass at 60 Hz and setting the low pass at 300 Hz, doing the same for channels 5 and 6 for the right channel. And finally, a low pass of 60 Hz on channels 7 and 8 for the subwoofer. Quickly, you'll notice that the phase control is a simple polarity reversal of either 0 or 180 degrees. The channel level is simple to control either by dragging or inputting a specific level by typing it in its corresponding field. And the mute function is applied simply by selecting the grayed out speaker. Similarly, the master level control can simply be dragged up and down or manually input in its corresponding field. Same with the mute. Finally, we'll get to the EQ portion. Each one of the 15 bands can be dragged to any frequency point as well as gain adjustment. 
The Q, or width of each band, can be dragged by the squares on either side of the corresponding band left and right. You can also adjust the gain of each band itself at the bottom of the screen, and you can manually input the Q and gain to any value within the set parameters in its corresponding field. By selecting the highlighted button of each band, you can bypass it or reset it to zero, and either re-enable it or adjust it again. These toggles are handy for finding each band and adjusting it individually. You'll notice if you unlink the channels at this point, you can make individual adjustments to each channel, but if you relink them, it will make both channels identical again, based on the first of the channel pair. You can see this demonstrated here in a few scenarios. It's also worth noting that when bridged, you must link the channels identically and you don't gain any additional bands of equalization. Your mileage may vary, but I've been using a long USB cable from the start with no connectivity issues. I've also had the amp bridge down on four of the channels, running all eight channels of the DSP and all six channels of the amplifier with no overheating problems. While I wouldn't necessarily use it for an ultra high performance competition system, for the majority of systems, this amplifier DSP combo is a home run with a value that can't be beat. This amplifier DSP combo offers the majority of the features offered by the standalone Zapco DSP products with the primary difference being 15 bands of parametric equalization per channel versus 31 bands of their products. The current price point of this amplifier DSP combo is $599.99 in the United States. Of course, this price may vary by country and is subject to change.